just to get the money going, I said, I'll put in $2 million. I didn't have $2 million, but I know that if I use my marketing skills and reached out, we get the 2 million and then WRI and ourselves then reached out to other brands to talk about this initiative and already show a commitment. And then we ended up securing 20 million and then another 20 million to create a new blueprint to reforestation, but call it a leap of faith, call it, you know, taking a risk because, you know, so that was one which I didn't have. Welcome to the Impact Multiplier CEO podcast. I'm Richard Metcalf, founder of X Quadrant, and my mission is to help the world's top CEOs and entrepreneurs shift from incremental to exponential progress and create a huge positive impact on our world. Now, that requires you to reinvent yourself and transform your business. So, if you're ready to play a bigger game than ever before, I invite you to join us and become an Impact Multiplier CEO. Matt Hill, you are the CEO of One Tree Planted, which I think has got an amazing mission in the world. But I'm going to get straight to the, straight to the heart of things. What's, your, what's the ultimate impact that you want to make in the world? The ultimate impact is to get people to just do more to help the environment, you know, and making the world a better place. You know, every little bit counts. So that's the ultimate impact. It's not a specific number. It's just about inspiring people, realizing that they can make a difference and, you know, putting a tree in the ground and together we're planting a forest. Great. So let's go back and set the picture. So the environment is your number one, uh, should we say concern, uh, over and above your family and, and all those other good stuff. And I know that you've planted, what is it? Let me have a look. Uh, how many trees is it already? 50, 50 million trees? 50 million trees last year. I think this month will probably be over 100 million trees in total. So started it back in 2014. And the first year was just 20,000 trees, then 50,000, then 100,000. And we've just been doubling year over year. So um, last year we received almost $100 million in donations. Yeah, that's incredible. So started in 2015, seven or eight years later, you know, this is the results you're getting. It's real exponential impact. It's the game I love to play and love my clients to play. You say it's been doubling every year, 50K the first year, 100K the second year, 300K, a million, 4 million, 50 million, going to get to 100 million. And I know you, you said uh, earlier on to me that one of, you know, one of your goals is to get to a billion, right? So a billion trees in the ground as a result of something which you created from nothing. It's amazing. Let's go back. What prompted you to, to start this journey? What's your origin story? Well, my undergrad was in poli sci way back in the day. So I took a lot of environmental classes and realized, you know, climate change before it was like this big, big topic, like it is today or the last X amount of years. So I was always interested. And I said, every little thing that people do, everything in moderation has always been my motto. And then, um, I ended up running Canada for eco products. And every time I was trying to get, um, big coffee shops or beer companies to buy compostable beer cups, coffee cups, and the price point was a little bit more. They'd always say, oh my God, it's too expensive, but we wish we could do more. I said, you can plant trees. People don't realize how important trees are. Air quality, water quality, biodiversity, job creation, carbon sequestration, et cetera. And I just had that in my back pocket. Not that I really had this charity at the time. And then a big company, a big grocery store said, oh my God, that's a great idea. You should start that. So that was call it the idea that stuck in the back of my head. And I was like, yeah, you know, I know businesses and people want to help the environment, but when you look around, it's very technical or it's very doom and gloom. So it stuck around. I still ran eco products for Canada, but then they got acquired by a really big company and the corporate culture changed. So I said, this is time for me to make my exit and start this, that just going to make it easy for people to help the environment. And what set the fire in your belly about that, right? Because pe many people want to do something, but you are really serious about it, right? You, you made a big shift in your life, your career, you committed to this project. So what was it that deeply touched you that made you say, I have to do this? Well, a couple of things. One, life is too short and you got to do what you're passionate about and like do, you know, what you wake up every day. It's not a job. So 
when this new company acquired them, the, it just changed a lot. So I said, you know what? I'm going to control my own destiny. I'm going to start this. I know people and, and companies want to help. But when you look for tree planting organizations, you really have to dig. And you don't know if this is Bob's your uncle in Brazil. Is he really putting a tree in the ground? You know, and I found that there was a lack of transparency. So me having call it more of a marketing background, I said, I'm going to just position myself a little bit differently from all the organizations who have been doing this for decades. And I never would have thought that we'd be this big right now. I figured, ah, you know, I get to see some amazing partners on the ground in various countries, you know, give them $10,000, plant 10,000 trees, learn. But I think it was a lot of hard work and I think a lot of lucky timing um, where we are today. Um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I love it. And so what, what were the different levels you had to go through? It started off just you. Mm-hmm. Right, just you say, I'm going to do this thing. So, like, tell where did you even start? It was just me, and I knew nothing. I'm not a forester. I didn't, you know, I, my degree is not in environmental policy or this and that. You know, I had an MBA in marketing, um, and I just was googling and reaching out to tree planting organizations and calling them. And if some of them gave me the time of day, I would like go out and meet with them and just, you know, get site visits with Cal Fire out in California and what they were doing for the forest fires. You know, some really incredible people that helped me. Hugh Locke, who was planting trees in Haiti and Tony up in British Columbia. So, and I went to Indonesia. I just kind of was a sponge. And, and I remember calling the United States Forest Service. I mean, look, the, like the icon with the green shield for planting trees and Yosemite National Forest. And I used to say, one day I'm going to give you guys millions of dollars to plant trees. And here we are as an official partner with the United States Forest Service and yes, giving them millions of dollars, but they must get calls like that every day. But I just had this kind of vision in terms of what I wanted to do. And uh, it was just me. I ended up getting a WeWork office, a, a hot desk, because that's all I could afford. And then when I had, and I was a teacher at the time because I have young kids, you got a mortgage to pay, food to put on the table. So I think I got lucky to be in that spot because when I was teaching, um, I taught 15 hours a week and I had summer off. So that's where I would then, you know, double down, you know, explore, learn. But then we had one person come on where I could barely afford their salary. And she's here right now, actually from Australia. We were joking about it just last night. And, um, but I said it would help because there was so much stuff starting to like grow little by little. And then when I took a sabbatical from school and focused on it for one full year, that's when we went from 300,000 to 1.8 million. And I went back to school and then I had to make the choice. Do I stay at school and I was tenured or do I take this leap of faith and, and, and do this? But at the end of the day, I love, I love what I do. I have an amazing team around me. We're working with incredible partners around the world, planting in over 70 countries right now. Um, yeah. So I just said, I know it's going to work. So here we are today. Well, let me ask you in that moment when you were like, oh, do I actually throw my lot into this new thing. I've got my family, I've got my kids, or, you know, young family. Was it an easy choice or was it quite, you know, did you, did you procrastinate on it? Did you, did you have to do some heart searching? No, I, it was an easy decision to make it. It was just a question of when. So I got it to the point where call it economically, I could pay myself a salary. And I just said, I'm going to pay myself exactly what I was making at school and anything above and beyond reinvesting. And I really invested into hiring more staff and just wanted to grow the organization that way. Yeah. So making the decision was easy. It was just like making sure that you could um, cover all the costs. Right. Yeah. So you built the business up enough that you had at least some basic salary coming in. Yeah. Let's get back to this point about you being a sponge. Well, so what I'm hearing is you didn't just go, I'm going to do this thing. Let me just build something. You spent a lot of time building relationships by the sound of it and getting insight into these different organizations. Were you trying to kind of identify what the gaps were, what the needs were, or did you already kind of know what you wanted to do and you just wanted to validate that? Well, one was, can you really plant a tree for a dollar? If I said one tree planted and then you donate $10 and you pick British Columbia and you want the trees, is that dollar enough? How does it work? So I spent a lot of times being that sponge going, asking questions, what does it cost to grow a tree? site prep, cost to plant the tree, cost to monitor and maintain the tree. And, and then just who was doing what, how, and if you're looking at the federal level to the state level, to the watershed level, all work very differently. So yeah, just being a sponge and, 
at the end of the day, yeah, you said it, relationships, because when there is an opportunity saying, yeah, I could find you 40,000 trees on a project I'm already working on and that they call us and they're explaining to me how it all works. Because at the end, you have to give that information back to the donor. You have to build their trust. And they, and I felt that there was a lack of transparency in terms of you donate to any charity, let's just say, typically you give them a hundred dollars and you got an email back that says, thanks for your hundred dollar donation. And the only time you hear next from them is a year later saying, Hey, it was a year ago. Do you want to donate again? I felt that if you want to help the environment, you're looking around and you made the donation, you picked the Amazon rainforest or British Columbia, that you are along for a journey to understand how your dollar is being used. Um, what stage is your donation? How much of it, you know, was going to the ground and for what? And we've been successful and I got lucky too, on a lot of ways, but you know, Shopify allowed you to create a website knowing nothing about coding and you know it was pretty pictures short description in terms of the project the community benefits ecological benefits etc and when i needed to make changes i could versus you got to go hire a web person and wait days or weeks for them to do it so combination of a lot of factors but really at the end of the day you know when i think a lot of the success too is hiring the right people you know not just because they're the smartest person or whatever it's really like are they passionate? They believe in what they want to do and having a great team, a cohesive team. That's been a big factor. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the discontinuities in this journey, because going from one person part-time, you know, in the WeWork office to your current setup, there's probably been a few shifts and I'm always, I'm sure there's been some gradual development. I'm always curious about courage. So what were the most courageous leadership decisions perhaps you had to make that result or bold moves, if you like, that helped you break through from perhaps one level to another? What comes to mind? Well, if you don't take risks, you can't move the needle. A couple of things come to mind, but probably the biggest one I could think of is last year, maybe two years ago with AFR 100 and, um, there was an initiative to restore hundred million hectares and in order to create the momentum, I, and I, we work with the world resource Institute and I, um, we're figuring out just to get the money going. I said, I'll put in $2 million. I didn't have $2 million, but I know that if I use my marketing skills and reached out, we get the 2 million and then WRI and ourselves then reached out to other brands to talk about this initiative and already show a commitment. And then we ended up securing 20 million and then another 20 million to create a new blueprint to reforestation, but call it a leap of faith, call it, you know, taking a risk because, you know, so that was one which I didn't have. And then, and, and let me just lay you down on that. How did you feel doing that? Were you completely confident that you had it or was it like, it was more of an act of, I will make it work. What was going on? I'll make it work. That's the way. I mean, another one I'll throw it. Like I was in San Francisco with them um, in a walking through and I said, how many in Golden Gate Park? And I'm like, how many people can come into here and plant? And what's the most amount of people you ever had? And they said a thousand, thousand people. And I said, wow, we're going to do an event here and I'm going to bring in all our business donors to meet us. And I'm going to bring planting partners and we're just going to make it a little fun couple of days together. So I tallied up all the costs. And it came to about $600,000. And then our ops said, whoa, $600,000. How are we going to come up with that to pay for it, to get all these partners and organize all these things? And I said, don't worry, I'm going to, I'm going to make it work. And within two weeks, I found the money saying the idea to brand saying, we're going to do this amazing event. We're going to have all like-minded people, tree planting, reforestation together. And we put it on within two months. So we had about 200, 300 people come to San Francisco. We had four days of doing tree planting. We did tree talks. I invited a bunch of people to talk from like satellite monitoring, drone monitoring, getting Cal Fire there, partners from the Oregon forest. And it was just an amazing time. And we had brands like HSBC, Hyundai and everything saying this was the best like conference dealing with sustainability that they'd been to. Because it wasn't just being lectured to and you're sitting there for 30 minutes listening. It was a fun four days. We went out on a boat, got a tour. We went to a baseball game. We went out to Golden Gate Park. People were talking for 15 minutes, get straight to the point. So let's just say, I think unconventionally, I take risks and I think if you're honest and you're talking, you know, not a lot of fluff. Anyways, those were probably two that were big risk take 
uh, moments that, well, what if we didn't raise the money? We'd have to eat it ourselves. So anyways, a few ideas. Yeah, that's great. I love the, um, is that it's what it's the sense of coming from a place of commitment, right? I often talk about this. It's like when we're committed to something, we kind of make it happen, right? We declare it. Yeah. We declare yeah. it's going to happen. You have, it pushes you to that next level to make it work because you've made the commitment, right? Versus it's just an idea and you keep overanalyze and you, you know, that's one thing that frustrates me is you, all these people get together and they talk about all these things and it just stays in limbo. I'd much rather I say, Give me X amount of money, call it $2,000, and I'll go out tomorrow and plant it. What's working well na- now? What didn't go so well? And what are we going to do better next year? So going on that thing for San Francisco where I pulled it off, it's actually happening, you know, two weeks from now where we're doing it in Colorado. So just to give you an example on how I was building this brand or this organization is people are coming in on Wednesday. We're getting together with 50 planting partners from around the world, the Philippines, Australia, Mexico, like just what can we, how is it working with us? What can we do better to help you, the planting partners outside of just money, you know, technical assistance, monitoring programs, whatever it might be. Then, and our brands are coming in. We go to a baseball game on Wednesday, Thursday, we go to a nursery to understand how do we grow trees in a nursery and like Hyundai and Visa and all these great brands, Google, Microsoft are there. Have any of them ever even been to a nursery, but they need to see that firsthand and talk. Oh, who are you? Where are you coming from? Oh, we're doing this. We're doing that. It inspires people. They're getting to meet the planting partners, our team. So anyways, Thursday nursery visit, Friday's the tree talks where everybody's just talking about things that are going on, sports, schools, everything, sustainability. And then Saturday, we're planting 6,000 trees in Colorado where people can get their hands in the dirt. It's an investment. Again, there's a lot of risk factors, a lot of logistical challenges where it could blow up in your face. But the thing is, I say that it, uh, you need to do more of this because when you, you get a lot of people together, it inspires everybody to do more. I hope you're enjoying this conversation. This is just a quick interlude to remind you that my book, Making Time for Strategy, is now available. If you want to be less busy and more successful, I highly recommend that you check it out. Why not head over to makingtimeforstrategy.com to find out the details. Now, back to the conversation. And I think you're creating memories and getting people to have an experience, see things firsthand, right? And that is a powerful story to tell. So true. And when you say memories, yeah, I mean, such valuable memories that you, when you were out in Colorado, it's on people's wish list. But we even have this cartoonist that's going to be there and each day, He's doing little, I'll call it cards and, oh, who are you? I'm from such and such company. And he's doing that moment and then he'll give it to you. So here you go, Richard, and you're going to go back home and you're going to have that. And you're going to like, oh, I remember that. And like really cool cartoon sketches. So a little bit outside the box on the thinking and things you can do that you're like, that's just not a traditional conference. I love it. So tell me about as you're going forward, You've got these exponential goals still ahead of you, right? 50 million last year, uh, 100 million, when we get to a billion, and probably beyond, right? I doubt you're going to stop and just hang up your shoes at that point. Um, How are you going to need to change yourself and how you lead in order to multiply your impact? Great question and probably the biggest struggle right now. And I emailed, I visited Bob Taylor from Taylor Guitars and he told me, and it stuck with me, it's always going to stick with me. When he reached 70 people, 100 people was his biggest challenge because, you know, when you're 40 people, 50 people, you know everybody and what's going on. But now it's 110 people at the organization. We're growing, call it more people come into the organization. I want to know everybody's name. How can I help you? My door's always open. But big challenges. Um, and I'm not a micromanager, but I do, you know, have high expectations and we want to put together quality of product, quality of service, answering calls within a timely manner, being nimble. So it's a big challenge right now. So yes, a billion trees, I think we could do, because if we kind of continue this growth and let's just say we flatten out a hundred million trees per year, give or take, and I stick around for the next 10, 15 years running the company, we'd, we'd hit a billion. But really, to tell you the truth, it's not my ultimate goal saying, oh, I want to plant a billion trees. There's two things. Corporate culture is the most important to me, building the brand. So when you ask the average person around the world, what's a tree planting organization that they say one tree planted? And I've been in places around the world where people are wearing a T-shirt and I say, hey, one tree planted. They're like, oh, my God, they're an amazing organization. I love working with them or we donate them. Yeah. Let me push you on that. So 
Why is that important? Is it just because you have a huge ego or is there something else going on there? No, far, I'm far from an ego. <laughs> I'd rather stay behind the scenes and I let other people take the... Uh, the I just think you, yeah, what's, but just seriously, what's going on? Like, I, I get it. I mean, obviously it's an organization you're really committed to. I understand you want to get it a household name, but like, what's the, what's the benefit do you think of having that as a household name? Oh, well, kids, you know, the environment's important and there's a lot of great organization doing incredible work in my, in forestry space and water space, biodiversity. Right. Um, but like, if you can make it fun, a little bit outside the box in terms of that, that. And people do it because I feel that a lot of organizations were doom and gloom. But why? Because I think if you can build that name and people want to help, they're like, oh, go to One Tree Plant and you could donate $5 and plant trees in Australia and help with, you know, X, Y, and Z. It just helps. So, yeah, it's awesome to see. And I see these commercials on TV and our, and our brand starting to be on there. And it's cool. It's very cool to see. And I think the team loves to see that too because you work and you meet these partners on the ground and, it just has this compounded effect and the snowball effect. Mm. Yeah. So let me go back one second to that question about shifting, how, do you, how are you going to shift your own success formula to multiply your impact? And you talked about this 70 to 100 people area, which is it, it's a classic pivot point. Uh, yeah, it's socially seen, right? There's, I think there's four social groupings we talk about, right? There's kind of intimate space. It's like two and three, you know, your top two and three people, your spouse, you know, there's friend, it's kind of very intimate. And there's like that family size grouping up to about 12. And then there's this kind of tribe um, that kind of starts to go up to about the 70 point between about 20 and 70 people where you know everyone's name and, you know, you feel you kind of belong. It's kind of the friendship zone. But then once you get beyond 70, uh, it, it really changes. It becomes a public space. You don't know everybody anymore. And it is a different... It is a different thing. So I can totally understand that. But bringing it back to you as a leader, so that's a challenge you're going to have to kind of figure out. But what do you think, how do you think that might change your own style of leadership? Like what might you need to bring out of yourself differently as the organization matures to that next level? You know, the, uh, I'm not a person big on org charts. Like we're one team, cohesive team. We're only as strong as the weakest link. I'm just throwing out things that I kind of, Show, throw it there but call it the five key people that i'm working with day to day that they can empower their departments their team you know always be there supportive and and not become siloed as an organization because i feel a lot of companies you know both me and you worked at the big call it corporate big environments and you know you're working beside somebody right next door doesn't even know what you're working on um so yeah it's a challenge it's the first time i've been in this i never expected to be running a hundred million dollar organization with a hundred employees. Like, and I, we joke when I started this, I said, I will do 2 million, 5 million in donations. You know, we'll never be more than 10 people, but you know, people and companies are calling us and I would love to be on every single call when a donor comes in, no matter the size, right. I try and speak on, speak to as many people as I can, but there's only so much time in the day and I'm pulled in so many different directions. So I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. Well, of course, as, as is everybody, right? That's the secret. Everyone's figuring out their, what their next level is. And I think that's the exciting game. Not everybody wants to play that game. Some people are happy to stay on that kind of incremental path. But I think the magic is where we start to think about, well, what does it look like when we 10x this, when we 2x it, 10x it? Yeah. Things change, but that's where and impact on, comes. And on that 10x and a lot of stuff I've seen, I mean, two things that are great. For us this year, it's not about growth. It's about doubling down on our infrastructure and our team and making sure everybody has the right systems in place and processes in place. Um, and so call it that is number one. Number two is the monitoring, reporting, and verification. Because can, how do you 10 exit, right? And how much can you use technology to help the environment, right? And it's not drones that are going to save the world by planting trees and shooting you know, little pellets into the ground. I think it can complement the traditional tree planting. It can get to hard to access sites. It can help on a lot of ways to analyze the landscape in terms of where there's, you know, areas that need, you know, higher intensity of tree planting or less where there might be connected corridors that need more attention. And then going back afterwards, analyzing a lot of the landscape and seeing did the trees survive and maybe we need to go back into a particular area so you can get a lot of info. And then you can share that with donors. Cause I think in the past donors were giving to a lot of great organizations out there, but in the dark, and then maybe five years later, they find out the, the, the project was successful or maybe it failed and they didn't know now in real time with the technology, 
the donors can see it. And I think they'll add more funding to it if they see the positive results. And then you can also, with technology, track all the co-benefits, water quality, biodiversity, et cetera. So we can scale. And as you know, is it going to be 10 X or whatever? And, you know, just mm -hmm. seeing all the projects. Yeah. 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 I, I love the, yeah, these opportunities that are coming up. So one thing that I know about you, Matt, is that you love to keep things simple. I've seen that in a number of places in your writing. Tell me about that. Um, cause on one level, it sounds like you, that you've got a lot of moving plate, a lot of spinning plates in your life and in the business or in the nonprofit, right? But yeah, in, in the organization, how, how do you bring simplicity into that? And, and, you know, do you have any advice for other leaders who are perhaps struggling with complexity and things not being simple? I've been in where we might pitch a particular project or concept and then somebody is explaining it and then like, I'm confused. And you know, that expression, I don't remember what is exactly like to explain it to a five-year-old and that they can get it. So if you keep it super simple, and I always say, I say this jokingly, pretty picture, 70,000 trees, California spotted owl. People get the big picture where sometimes they're going to go into so complex situations and you become paralyzed by choices or paralyzed because it's too technical or you're spinning at doom and gloom, right? It's just like show hope, inspiration. Here's an amazing project it was affected by a forest fire two years ago. It needs 70,000 trees. And this is, these are the types of trees that we're going to go in with. And you know, the spotted owl is dependent on this particular area. And again, people get it. If people want to dig deeper and get more of the technical aspects, they can, but 80, 90% of people just want to understand the high level stuff and not get into the weeds of it. And look, we plant with some pretty sophisticated big companies and they can jump on with the project manager. We can do a Zoom with the partners on the ground and we can do site visits, but just for them to understand it, keep it simple and keep it simple in life. How do you keep it simple in your own life? What simplicity look like for you at home? Again, we're saying, you know, family, I say this to the entire company, family is first and life happens, right? So, you know, I'm not counting sick days, this and that, or family days. And I have to, to bring my kids to the orthodontist and, you know, sick days at school, take care of that first, because then if you have peace of mind, know you're taking care of the family front, you can focus on your job, right? And then you have a team that's dependent, that you can depend on when you are taking care of the important parts of life and rely on, because it, what goes around comes around, right? So, um, keeping it simple, I try the best I can, but you know, now more and more I have to travel um, you know, um, there's just dynamics of life. So I don't have the specific thing. I just try and keep, uh, keep, keep, keep life just like simple. And, you know, at the end of the day too, I would say, just be a nice guy and be yourself. You know, like I could be talking to some gazillionaire and they're solicited probably, I don't even know how many times for that. Please give us money. Please give us money. We've never come across of like asking for, cause we're a charity at the end of the day. And we've never gone and saying, can you give us money? We talked about, here's this amazing project in Brazil. And here's the impact, right? And then if we meet with them, there's like talking, talking about the project and somebody who's got a good head on their shoulders knows when somebody's legit and telling the truth and not trying to be a used car salesman type tactic and blowing smoke up their butt, yeah. let's just say, <laughs> right? This is the project. I am who I am. And on the other part for business as a whole, I've had some big accounts and they've kind of pushed back or call it been unreasonable. And then you have to find the fine balance between saying, look, we're a charity and this doesn't make sense. And if you kind of push back and explain it the right way, I, I think we have a hundred percent success record. They just didn't see it that way. And they said, okay, sure. Yeah. We're in because we understand the circumstance. Everybody's been very fair, you know, and I want to work with the right types of companies and people that want to do it the right way, because in the space that I'm in. I don't think that companies call it or anybody can afford to try and do it as cheap as possible or greenwashing. You can't, you can't. And like to me and our company, it's all about amazing team around you, quality pro projects and amazing partners on the ground. Because at the end, the one tree planted business model, we're a charity and we plant in over 70 countries around the world, but we're just reallocating the funds to the ground, to the ground. And I want to make sure that that money's going direct to the ground and not getting siphoned off and only like 30 cents ends up going to the ground and rest getting caught up in red tape bureaucracy. So we, re and as a charity, 
80-20 rule is very important to me. So you as a donor gives $100, at least 80 cents is going to the ground and we can cover our operating on the 20 cents. And last year we did 83 cents went to the ground and we managed to operate on 17 cents of every dollar, which I think is a big thing and the company can be proud on, on doing that. Yeah, and I love the way that you monitor that and really focus on that as a key metric. So, Matt, this has been um, a great conversation. I do have one more question for you, um, but I want to just recap a little bit because I think there's been a lot of lot of great insights here. I think what I learned was that you actually used your marketing background and really harnessed that. You know, you looked for positioning, what's not being met, right? There's transparency issues. Let's resolve that. I mean, how many impact organizations around the world might learn from that and, and actually like how do we how do we show ourselves in different light and how do we focus on transparency and follow through i think we talked about you know your we've talked about your sponge research project building relationships um and also in the way that you kind of bootstrap the whole thing you didn't just launch into it you had an income source gave yourself a bit of breathing space proved out the concept so that when then you were in a position to go all in you have looked at these, this question of courage, right? Times where you put two million on the line, you didn't have because you believed in the project and you were committed to it. And that all in nature, I think, is one of the reasons why you're seeing this growth because you are committed and it comes across. And then, yeah, we've talked as well about some of these growth phases that organizations go through, you're being honest, right? At the moment, there's a new growth level that you need to break through. And then we talked about you know, simplicity on one hand. And I think what I took away from what you said just now was speak to impact, speak to the vision, keep it simple, paint the picture of what we're looking for here. And don't come across as just the needy, please give me money. But actually, look, this is the vision. Are you in? Are you joining us on the vision? And I think any leader in any organization, that's a great way of operating, right? Is to say, look, this is the journey. Isn't that inspiring? I've been running a program with a, a customer actually um, called uh, Ownership Accelerator. They want to make sure their whole management are really are, own it and buy into the, the vision of the company. Well, the first thing I did was I talked to the executive team and said, you know what, like, you need to be giving them the inspiring vision. Um, engagement and motivation and ownership is not a fixed quantity. It's not like you just hire somebody and they have a fixed amount of ownership, right? They don't. That your level of ownership and engagement responds in terms of the vision that you're painting them. So are you actually just telling them about your, your investor goals or are, you know, and, and your targets? Or are you actually giving them a goal that makes them a hero and that gets them excited? And I think you, you really spoke to that in, in that as well. So before I ask you my final question, um, where do people get in touch? If they're curious, if they're inspired, uh, you know, how can they get in touch with, with you or, or with the organization? Sure. Matt, the M-A-T-T at OneTreePlanted.org. Happy to answer any questions. Happy for people to come out and see a site, visit a nursery. Perfect. Yeah. Well, it's been expired. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to get to one of these, uh, one of these experiential events. It sounds like they're amazing. Yeah. The forest fest. If you weren't, if you weren't all the way in France, I'd say come next, come in a couple of weeks. I'd love for you to join us. Oh, well, there you go. Well, you have to tell me about that. That, that sounds fun. Um, Okay. And so my last question is, is very simply this, what would you want to say to a leader who, who does want to multiply their impact and make a bigger difference on the world, uh, perhaps hasn't got started yet, or perhaps hasn't had that exponential growth that you have, you know, what, what would be one thing that you'd want to leave them with? Do it. I think you got to You got to just take action. Action is, is one thing. I think, um, relationships are so important because people have lots of options, but they want to deal with the person that's just, you know, more genuine. Um, and I think, you know, in my space, for example, you know, with leaders that want to help the environment, you know, they think, well, it's too big of a problem. I can't do much, but you know, if you are in a particular industry and let's take fashion or tech and you put in $10,000, but get a bunch on board, you can have a dramatic effect. Um, yeah. And then I read a lot of books and then, you know, you learn from your failures too, right? And it's continuous improvement. So I think at the end of the day, you know, I'm not one who's just about talk, 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 just do it and then figure out, just keep getting better. Yeah. Yeah. So let's not overanalyze, uh, but get clear about what we want to focus on and just start to move the ball forward. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, Matt, thank you. That's been a, a great conversation. Uh, I wish you all the best uh, on your mission. I'm looking forward to seeing the chart um, of trees planted that hit the 100,000 mark. And, and let's face it, it's not going to stop there. So um, to a billion and beyond. Um, Matt, thank you. And uh, to your impact. Great. Pleasure to be here. Bye-bye now. Bye. Well, that's a wrap. If you received value from this conversation, please do leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd deeply appreciate it. And if you'd like to check out the show notes from this episode, head to xquadrant.com slash podcast, where you'll find all the details. Now, finally, when you're in top leadership, who supports and challenges you at a deep level to help you multiply your impact? Discover more about the different ways we can support you at xquadrant.com.